untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck featuring Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty as our commander, suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This 5 mana 3 one has Cascade, meaning when we cast Emoti, even if Emoti itself gets countered, we still get that Cascade trigger, saying we get to exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non-land card that costs less. So ideally we hit a 4 mana card, but could also be a 1, 2 or 3 drop, and then we may cast that card without paying its mana cost, and then the rest gets put back on the bottom in a random order. And then once Emote is on the battlefield, it says spells we cast with mana value 6 or greater have Cascade. So that can also make our more expensive spells provide immediate value when we cast them. So Emote is excellent in this ramp deck, where every cheap card in our deck is dedicated towards making more mana. So even if the opponent answers Emote, we'll have the extra mana to replay it and pay the commander tax. And then of course we're also ramping into bigger and better things that will synergize naturally with Emote as well. So taking a look at our deck breakdown, the left side is just all the ramp cards pretty much, and then we've got our finishers on the right hand side. So starting at 1 mana there's Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, we've got some 2 mana ramp with Explorer and Growth Spiral putting extra lands in play, Haven can enchant one of our lands to make extra green mana, we've got Into the North to find a snow land, which is one of the reasons why we have all these snow covered basics, although we're also running Icebreaker Kraken as another great payoff. And then there's a few ramp creatures as well that can sometimes make 2 mana, Leafkin if we have 4 or more creatures in play, Karyotid if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, so these can also be quite nice. And then we've got the usual 2 mana ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. These ramp artifacts that come into play untapped are especially nice, since they can potentially make mana after we cascade into them with Emoti, so they can still give us a small mana boost in that same turn, which can come in handy. Then at 3 mana there's Cultivate, got Elvish Rejuvenator to find an extra land. Fierce Empath will find one of our finishers with mana value 6 or greater, so that gives us a bit of flexibility. Then we've got multiple creatures that can generate 2 mana. Gwenna can only use that mana to cast creature spells, but also untaps if we cast something big. We've got the Somberwald Sage making 3 mana to cast creature spells. And then both the Engineer and Palladiumir make 2 mana on a 3 mana ramp creature here. Then we've got Sylvala, which can also generate a ton of mana if we control a large creature, maybe drawing cards in the process as well, although sometimes has the drawback of drawing the opponent extra cards. Cura can untap some of our permanents, excellent with our more expensive ramp artifacts or some of these creatures like Sylvala, that can generate more than one mana. And then there's Lenor Visionary, can draw a card and make one mana. We've got Harrow, which can sacrifice a land to find two more basics to enter the battlefield untapped. So also excellent to cascade into with Emoti, since we can immediately use those two extra lands. Then at 4 mana there's a Goreclaw, giving our expensive creatures a 2 mana discount. Guardian Project is an awesome card draw engine, especially if we cascade into it with Emoti, it will be on the battlefield before Emoti enters, so then when Emoti enters we immediately draw a card. Invasion of Zendikar gets to find two lanes alongside Migration Path and a Vastwood Surge. Then we also have Nylea, giving our creatures a 1 mana discount, can turn into a 5-6 indestructible god if we enable its devotion. And then the Slumbering Isle, also recent addition, can make 2 mana and eventually turns into a 12-12. Hedron Archive can also immediately tap for 2 mana. And then we get to some of the 5 mana cards. These don't quite enable the Emoti Cascade yet, but they're very powerful in their own right. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn. And Nissa will double the mana produced by our forests and can untap a land with the plus 1 ability. We've got Vorinclex finding 2 forests when it enters and can also potentially transform. Lotus makes 3 mana. And Paradox Engine is great with all these ramp artifacts and mana creatures, as we can keep untapping them over and over again to generate more mana. And then we get to some of our 6 mana cards that will enable the Cascade on Emoti. We've got Temporal Sundering to take an extra turn if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker to enable it, and bounce an opposing permanent as well potentially. River's Rebuke has a one-sided bounce effect. Caretaker with Hexproof can also put counters on the team. We've got Rishkar's Expertise to draw a bunch of cards, maybe cast a 5 mana card for free afterwards. We've got Sarak and Gorklaw, which can give our other creatures an extra counter and haste when they enter the battlefield, so that can also be very nice if we cascade into multiple creatures. Our mana creatures can also immediately tap for mana. Then there's Kogla, which can find something when it enters, destroy artifacts or enchantments when it attacks. 
got the Immortal Sun, since we don't have a ton of Planeswalkers ourselves, and then will give us a 1-mana discount on everything, draw extra cards, pump the team, just an excellent card all around. And then Wormcoil Engine shines against some more aggressive decks as a 6-6 with Death Touch and Lifelink that will split up into additional worms when it dies. We've got Alrun's Epiphany to take an extra turn, We've got Hullbreaker Horror, even the nerfed version is still very good. Good Seagate Restoration and Turn Timber Symbiosis as a lands that we can also cast as expensive spells if we have a lot of mana to work with. Alt Gnawbone can generate a ton of treasure tokens if we manage to hit the opponent. We've got the new Hunger Dominus, which can double the power and toughness of each creature we control. We can also make it indestructible if we maybe sacrifice some mana creatures. Titan of Industry is also excellent, can take out artifacts or enchantments, can protect itself or other creatures, and make a Rhino token when it enters. And then a Coma Cosmos Serpent can also protect itself by sacrificing those Coma's Coil tokens, maybe shut down opposing creatures before they get a chance to attack. And then the even more expensive cards include the one with a multiverse to cast cards for free, maybe play cards of the top of our deck as well. Crater of Behemoth as the finisher of choice once we build up a large enough board. Cityscape Leveler is excellent at removing stuff and can be unearthed from the graveyard. We've got the Great Henge, which is one of the best cards to have alongside Emoti, since we can often cast it for pretty cheap, but it will still count as a 9 mana card that can maybe cascade into an 8 drop afterwards if we're very lucky, so that can lead to some very crazy turns as well. We've got a Jinga Taxius, Core Augur, to refresh our hand turn after turn while making the opponent discard their hand end of turn basically by reducing their hand size to zero. And then Ulamog can exile two cards when it gets cast, so even if it gets countered will provide ample value, especially with Emoti out. And then Icebreaker Kraken benefits from having snow-covered basics, as it will get a 1-mana discount for each one we have in play, and then counts as a 12-mana card when we cast it for cascade purposes, so it could even cascade into an Ulamog, which is excellent. And then Galta is similar to the Great Henge, but is even cheaper to cast in most circumstances, so we could cast it for just double green, and then it will still count as a 12-mana card for Emoti. And then our mana base just has a lot of blue-green dual lands in addition to the snow-covered basics. Also need a lot of basics to search up with our various ramp cards like Fastwood Surge. And then a few utility lands with Soaring City and Boseju, which can be channeled. We've got Castle Garenbrig, which is excellent for ramping into our bigger creatures, as it can give us a one-mana boost. And then uh, some uh, dual lands, as we mentioned. A few utility lands, including Bonder's Enclave as well, to draw extra cards. And then we've got a Nykthos, which can also potentially generate more mana once we have a lot of green devotion typically in play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, up against Sahili Filigree Master, and our hands seem solid. Couple cheap ramp cards, can get more forests for Nyssa. And Goreclaw to discount our expensive creatures. So prioritize playing forests. And Guardian Idol on two. Could do the same, but we'll just into the north for a forest. And then next turn, we've got a few options. Probably go for Idol and maybe an Explore. So your opponent's got lots of artifacts that kind of replace themselves. And then next turn we'll see Sahili most likely. Beanstalk is nice since it gets an untapped land. So I'll still get a uh, forest here for Nyssa. And then we could either Growth Spiral or Explore, or just play Guardian Idol, which is guaranteed mana. Even though getting an extra forest off the top could be even better with Nyssa. It's going to be a Sigh into Boots to protect their creatures. Rishkar's Expertise could be great later. So we've got a couple options. Getting a Nissa down is always a good idea. So let's say we go with a Nissa. Can untap a forest, still play Goreclaw. That seems reasonable. No real point in attacking. Okay. 
And our opponent could give a big creature haste with a boot to pressure Nyssa. And I'm sure they'll be able to generate a few Thopters as well. So we may not have our Planeswalker around for long. But even getting one turn with Nyssa out could be enough. So another artifact that draws. And a Thought Monitor, that's nice. Draws two cards. A Mox Amber is free mana and a Thopter. So yeah, opponent's definitely going off. They could bounce Gorklaw with a Spell Bomb. Currently not enough power to take out Nyssa, at least. They can hit it for four. And we get to untap. Okay, so... Could cast a Koma if I untap my island with Nyssa. I think I'm in favor of just playing Emoti first. And then see what we cascade into. And then maybe play Goreclaw afterwards. Sage is nice. So, yeah, can play Goreclaw. Still untap a land. And maybe cast an Explore. Could trade for a bunch of Thopters, which is reasonable. So I guess we'll untap the forest first. The or we could just play a Beanstalk Giant here and then still Cascade with Emoti. Although if we play Goreclaw, Beanstalk gets a discount in later turns. Yeah, I'll just play Goreclaw and explore, I think. And then no more Nyssa, but we replaced it with Sage, which can also make a bunch of mana to cast our creature spells. Mechanaut gives artifacts a one mana discount. And once your opponent's empty handed, they can always draw using Sai's ability. So Nyssa down. Thopters stay on defense. So maybe they can use those for. Convoke purposes, who knows? Opponent passes. So we can start with Vorinclex, searching up additional forests. Activate Castle. Since the ability is going to come in handy, giving us an extra mana basically. Opponent might have a counter spell available. Commit. Okay. That happens. So, just play Koma now, I guess. Cascade into Kyora. Get to draw, and there's Vorinclex once again. Can cast it after untapping Sage. And then still will grow Spiral. Or we could play Engineer, set up even more mana for next turn. Not bad. Do we want to attack? Not really. Probably we'll lose Kiora to all the flyers. And our opponent can cast Memory to kind of shuffle our hand away. So having a Beanstalk in Exile is still helpful. Although if we get to cast a Rishkar's Expertise, that would be nice. Chromatic Orrery is a good one. Can make a bunch of mana and draw cards. So they haven't cast Sahili yet so far. Not sure what they're waiting for. Could try to tap down the Orrery with our Serpents, but they would get to make mana in response. There's Sahili at long last. Can make Thopters or draw cards. Could also eventually pump up all the Thopter tokens. But Gorklaw giving the team Trample should help us Pressure Sahili. Defense grid is fine. Okay, so I did a lot of work here. An army of Thopters. And Kira will probably fall to an attack. Nope, opponent hangs back. Take or draw. Okay, so where do we begin? Could play a Gilded Lotus. Could just cast a Rishkar's Expertise and then play Lotus for free, which is pretty efficient too. 
get to Cascade. Finding an Empath, that could get a Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is pretty appealing right now. And then Free Lotus, please. And yeah, let's just hoof the opponent here. Finding a free Alrun's Epiphany, why not? Could still activate Cura to cast something else first, but let's just put our opponent out of their misery. Alright, let's smash. Full claw triggers. And that should be enough damage. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play up against a Giruda Doom of Depths. And our hand is good, not great. Missing a few lands, perhaps. But uh, yeah, if we can pick up a land or two, then explore into Silvala. Should be a decent start. Alright, that's good. And there's another one. Okay, so could even play our Slumbering Isle next turn. Yeah, I think going for Slumbering Isle first is probably fine. Get that going as soon as possible. And then next turn we have to see if we want to play a project first or go for Emoti. Opponent also ramping with a Guardian Idol. And a Solemn. Okay, so they're keeping up nicely. Picked up a land, so now I'm maybe liking Guardian Project since we can still Growth Spiral and get value out of it potentially. Or we could play Silvala. Yeah, I guess Silvala makes sense too. Even their opponent might get some benefit from it once they play Giruda. And there's Giruda. He gets to draw Silvala. Immortal Sun, luckily, they cannot cast, so it's just a virus beetle. Okay. So we've got a decent amount of mana to work with. If I play Holebreaker, I don't have the mana to activate Silvala afterwards. So maybe we wait to set that up. And for now, either Emoti or Vorinclex, and then Silvala makes a lot more mana. Pick up two forests as well. And draw Guardian Project. Okay, so we can activate Silvala. Making blue and green mana is fine. So, could play Hullbreaker now, could go Emoti first, and then still play Engineer. Finding a Kiora, that's excellent. And now we've got a 12-12. So now if I untap Silvala, it will make even more mana. I love to make a splash. Oh yes. We're going off. So now I can play Holebreaker. Cascade. Trigger Holebreaker, find Gwenna, keep drawing with Guardian Project too. Or living the dream. Kiora draws as well. Yeah, this is pretty ridiculous. And how about we just take an extra turn here? And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand up against Jadar. So black sacrifice deck most likely. We've got a Leafkin into maybe a Nylea on three. Guardian project first could also be fine. The rest will take our project. So Nylea it is, assuming Druid survives. There's Jadar. Okay, play Nylea. And then next turn we can play a 4 mana emoti. Opportunist is pretty good with Jadar, drawing an extra card each turn. Okay, so play emoti and then can still play Lenor Elves. Icebreaker could be nice. Got plenty of snow lands. Just need to find a second blue source. Nylea up to four devotion, so almost a creature. Opportunist draws. Champion can start growing as zombies enter the battlefield. Ooh, and a Kuma. Still missing that double blue, but we'll play Galta and get to Cascade. Alter option was just activating Nylea, but this seems better, and a great Henge. That's excellent. Even get to Henge first. Henge also cascades into a Nissa. Okay, that was an epic turn. Nylea is a creature. Great Henge enters the battlefield, can make two mana. Galta enters, draws with a Henge. Still can activate Nissa, maybe untap our island to make double blue at some point. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand up against Jetmere tokens, which can kill very quickly if it curves out. So. Hopefully our Paradox Engine can uh, ramp out some powerful cards here. For now, Kiora can maybe set up either Engine or Emoti on the following turn. Clarion Spirits, not bad here. Okay, now Invasion of Zendikar might be slightly better. Get two basics. And Minsk to make a boot token. Take three. So what are our options? Could just play Alt Knobbone here, hope it survives. Could go with Kiora, untap a land, play Moti. Both of those are reasonable. Although Kiora will be under quite a bit of pressure. So maybe just playing Knobbone here is fine. And then Galta becomes quite affordable if Gnawbone sticks around. Now we only get treasures if Gnawbone hits a player, so it doesn't work if we attack our invasion of Zendikar. But it looks like Gnawbone stabilized us nicely. Just gotta watch out for Jetmir eventually pumping the team. So let's see here. Can start by attacking the opponent directly. And then we should be able to do some powerful things. Make seven treasures. Let's say we start with a Paradox Engine. Play Emoti, which will untap our Signets. And gotta go full control here. So I can actually tap my Signet once again to make an extra mana. And then cultivate, getting some more lands. And then now we'll play Kiora. So we get to draw once we play Galta. 
and time signet. And then I'll play Galta. Migration path is a good one too. Okay. Get to draw off Kyura. And the Sage is next. So let's say we play a Fierce Empath. What do we want to get? Got essentially four mana left. Icebreaker Kraken's gonna be pretty cheap to play. So that might be the pick, so I can still play it this turn. We have four, nine snow lands, yeah. Probably should have made blue mana instead here, but that's fine. Let's get moving. Play Kraken. And our opponent has seen enough. With Icebreaker we can pick up a few of our basics as well to potentially cast it multiple times. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Explore into Hedron Archive, facing Angrath. So this may be a matchup where we just want to empty our hand as quickly as possible. So the plus ability wouldn't be as effective. And this hand's pretty good at doing so. Pretty lined on forests to go with Nyssa, but there's one of them. And a Priest of Forgotten Gods could be quite effective. Okay, now maybe Vast would search over Archive since we get to search up a few forests this way. And I can maybe make use of the Archive's mana the turn we play it in a later turn. So playing a Gnawbone into a Priest is probably not the best idea. Want to get Emoti down first to potentially have something cheaper to sacrifice. So next turn we could go Archive into Emoti. If I play Nissa, then I can leave myself with two untapped forests. So maybe that's still better. Play Nyssa. And we'll need some blue mana here. Could still go Archive, Untap Forests. That's uh, four mana, not quite enough for Emoti, so I think we just Untap Island. And then I'm not going to bother attacking, just play Emoti. Find a Cultivate, so that will get two more Forests. Okay, so we've got two creatures in play, and Anissa at six loyalty. So that should make it easier to empty out our hand. And now Mayhem Devil could potentially take out Emoti with the ability, and then we would still have to maybe sacrifice our island. And a Stomp can do that as well. Elder Fang makes us discard a Cold Steel Heart. And this all takes a bit of damage. Looks like they are planning to activate Priest here. We'll still be a damage short of finishing off Nissa. So yeah, opponent decides to just attack instead. Ooh, a Temporal Sundering. And yeah, we have a Planeswalker on the battlefield, so that will work. Now, can I go Emoti and then still Temporal Sundering? That seems better. So that should work. Find a Haven. Maybe should have even enchanted my forest since then we get to add even more mana. But uh, I think we'll be just fine. So let's say we untap a forest here. Then I should still have the mana for Archive into Temporal Sundering. 
but we can attack first. And we'll bounce Mayhem Devil. Find an Engineer. Okay, so we've got all the mana we need, just missing a few extra finishers perhaps. And an Allruns Epiphany to take another extra turn is probably going to be too much for the opponent to handle. I don't get the birds if I just cast it for 7 mana, but... Yeah, opponent has seen enough already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw in the mirror match. And it's pretty important that we're off to a quick start and without any early acceleration. I think I have to mulligan that one, unfortunately. This is better. Good carry it and visionary into emoti. And then a temporal sundering is going to be quite powerful if we can get it off. Don't think I'll be casting symbiosis. Especially now with Guardian Project to draw extra cards. Could play an Invasion of Zendikar next turn. Gives us the most mana. And then I can maybe keep Visionary until after I play Project. So we're definitely off to the faster start here. Opponents probably playing their last land for a survey. So they've got access to 6 mana. Okay, so we could play Emoti. We could go Project plus Visionary, which I also kind of like. These are all cards that wouldn't cascade with Emoti, and this way we get to draw an extra card of Project when we do play Emoti. Although there is potentially more upside if we cascade into like a nice 3 or 4 drop. And then next turn I can Engineer plus Emoti. Bowen plays a tap the bridge. And there's Emoti cascading into. Can have a look at the Exalt cards. There's Epiphany and Migration Path is a pretty excellent hit. Finding a 4 mana card with your 5 mana Cascade. Galta isn't bad either. So we'll start with our own Emoti. Finding Gwena. It's also pretty nice with the project in play. And then could still play Galta here. And cascade into a Vastwood Surge. Okay, so both decks are going off. We're definitely slightly ahead here. And if we get to take an extra turn, we can kind of solidify that advantage. But it doesn't take much for the opponent to recover. A Reverse Rebuke comes to mind. A Mockery of Nature, okay. Nine mana gets to take out our enchantment. Seems pretty good here. And a Titania's Command as the Cascade. So it can keep ramping. Can also cascade into something else beneath the sands. So that's a pretty powerful turn. We'll see what they choose here. Two lands and a couple bear tokens. Can get any lands, including utility lands, but just gets the basics. And Guardian Project down. Okay, let me start by... Casting a Temporal Sundering, probably bouncing the Mockery, and then see what we cascade into. If I get an extra Snowland in play, my Kraken becomes cheaper too. And our opponent has seen enough already, alright. Could uh, cultivate, get an extra snow land, play two mana Kraken, Cascade, and potentially hit something quite expensive, and keep going. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, up against a Narset Enlightened Exile. So our hand's a little on the slow side with only a migration path for ramp. Take a mulligan, this is better. Got a Mindstone and Haven. Now a Karyatid as an option too. Although Karyatid is more likely to die to removal. So let's go with uh, Haven maybe over Mindstone, in case they have artifact removal. They can both make mana the turn we play them, so they're kind of equivalent there. Young Pyromancer, alright. So a nice Just Guy spells the deck. Can Migration Path. Get Islands. Times two, maybe. Have plenty of forests in case of a Nissa already. And then we could see Narset here. It's going to be a Servo Exhibition first. So our opponent's going very wide, which is a good combo with Balmor as well. Well, I could just go with uh, Koma here, which is uncounterable, in case our opponent's holding up some interaction. That might be safest, even though we don't get that immediate emoti value from Cascade. And then hopefully they don't have an exile effect here. Raise the alarm for more tokens. At least Koma also makes a token every turn to help us uh, keep up with this. But that's a lot of tokens. Narsets will give the entire team prowess. So we have a limited window here to stop the opponent from what they're doing. There's nothing I can get with Fierce Empath that would help since I only have 5 mana to work with afterwards. So probably time for Emoti then, and then we'll take a big hit next turn, hopefully we're not dead yet. Nylea helps. So we can activate Nykthos for green. And then play a bunch of creatures out. Fierce Empath. Okay, maybe go for a Craterhoof Behemoth or Galta. I guess Galta has the highest upside right now, which is maybe what we need. So cast a Galta for two mana. And sadly just cascade into an Explore. That one could have been better. So regretting not getting a Crater Hoof now. So any point in activating Coma next turn. There's no activated abilities that we're stopping. So yeah, just gotta pass it back. And hope we've got enough blockers lined up here. Our hand also leaves a lot to be desired, so we kind of have to get it done with what we have in play. But I guess it's good enough for the opponents. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play up against Arcades, so Defender deck. Our hand is lacking a two-mana accelerant, but if the Palladium Mirror survives, we could still be okay. The Defender deck is not known for having a lot of removal, but a source to plowshares will definitely be in their list. Yeah, we've got some alternative 3 man options, but Mirror has the highest upside. So we can, with a land, even cast an Immortal Sun, or just go for Lotus. And then we can still play a 3 mana card afterwards. Kiora untaps Lotus, play the uh, Fertile Footsteps. That would be great. And Naturalist is fine. So it looks like Mirror will stick around. Okay, time for Lotus. Into Kiora. Untap Lotus. And Fertile Footsteps get a forest. That was an excellent turn. And now we're all ready to cast Emoti and start cascading. Now Mortal Sun will shut down Kiora's minus one ability, but uh, can make sure to use it first. 
and then it will still draw us extra cards with large creatures entering. A wall of runes to scry here, that's fine. And an attack for two. So your opponent's kind of struggling with their mana situation a little bit. Okay, what's next? Probably start by untapping Lotus. Can cast Emoti. And then we can still play Mortal Sun and get the extra Cascade value. Arrow's nice too. Yeah, Immortal Sun sounds appealing. Hitting a uh, Lenor Elves. That one could have been better, but I'm not going to complain. Can still play Nylea. Our opponent did indeed have a Swords to Plowshares, but uh, they waited pretty long to cast it. And most of the damage has been done. So Nylea gives Emoti and our author creatures a 1-mana discount, and so does Immortal Sun. So we can just replay Emoti for 5-mana. Opponent can finally play Arcadas. And then Wall of Runes could finish off Kyura if they'd like. That's fine. Even though Kyura could draw us a few more cards, how much do we need the mana from Lenor Elves, I guess is the question. Next turn, play Emoti. Yeah, I think the mana will be helpful. And we should have enough card draw here between Immortal Sun and the extra Cascade. Okay, step one, play Emoti. And then we want to make sure to use Castle as well for mana. So I guess I'll do that now. Guardian Project is excellent. We'll draw cards right away before Emoti enters. And a Slumbering Isle for two mana. That's a bargain. Although, let's see, might be better off just playing a Titan of Industry. We'll have one mana left. I guess I haven't played a land yet, so we should actually be good to cast both. And then Nylia is active as well. Titan Cascades. Alright, so we got to see our blue-green Emoti ramp deck in action, and I was quite impressed by it. The fact that our commander provides immediate value as soon as we cast it, similar to the five-color sliver commander, means that even if the opponent has a counter spell or removal, we still get to kind of pull ahead, and then we're often finding additional ramp with the cascade, which makes it easier to replay Emoti and cast our other bombs. So as long as you've got a good opening hand with some early acceleration, and then a deck that has a mix of ramp and payoff cards, it kind of plays itself but it's also quite satisfying trying to optimize every turn to spend as much mana as possible to pull ahead. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.